Isolation Nation, welcome to the Social Distancing Social Club. Steve is not here today. <laughs> you, know, you know, we do what we gotta do, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, I'm very excited to introduce, I, I put too much in my mouth to host the show. <laughs> you know, I do kind of get the point, it's a little bit di distracting, but... No one's going to tell Steve, right? Okay, good. It's now my pleasure to introduce to you the next leg of the four-legged tripod to make up the quarantine. It's Chris Bowers! Did you forget how to eat, Ben? That w I mean, like you've, it's only been two weeks since you stopped eating. You done, is that a cracker? Is that a caramel? What's going on there? Kate Louise sent us a bunch of candy from England, and this is a banana toffee-flavored chew, and I've never tried one yet, and it's delicious and very, very chewy. Yeah, no, I can tell it's super chewy. Uh, just keep keep with that. I hope you have a bunch of them for the whole show. Anyway, uh, Queen Rachel's here. How you doing, Queen? Have you got things I in your mouth? I found my props. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rolling the Joan Jett vibes today. Oh, I, that was more Cruella de Vil a little bit. That, actually, that's probably more... Um, I should wear this if I go see that movie. I'm not going to. You should put some movie. white streaks in it. I don't think you're going to see that movie, or you're going to see, gonna see it on Netflix at your house. But that's oh. neither here nor there. I don't buy Emma Stone as Cruella Deville. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I buy Emma Stone. I like Emma Stone about anything, so I'm going to give her a shot at it. You know, I mean, you know, that's the point of acting, right? Is to be something they don't think you could be. Yeah. Yeah, I don't buy her. And I saw the preview. I'm like, uh, I don't know. Okay. I don't know what I you am, said there, but I'm assuming you don't like her. I, I, have no, I, I love Emma Stone. Love Emma Stone. <laughs> no, I'm saying, I can't understand a word you're saying because of the chew, so I don't know if you like I'm the movie. Not, all I'm trying to say is that I have sometimes <laughs> poison. I love that for the conglomerator. It's hard to travel you know, well, 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 But Ben's chewing that up. Let's do the overnight game. How about that? Uh, the overnight game, what was it? It was... Boom, 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 boom. It was... Uh, that's the sound for generals, not for... Yeah, yes, yeah, right. Yeah, sorry, not... sorry. My bad. My bad. You're right. Uh, what does SDSC stand for? Wrong answers only. Uh, so let's see. Uh, Tam had some dicks, some comedians. Which, you know, <laughs> it's mostly dicks. I like that one. Uh, Stephanie Ibe Ibanez had stoners, drunks, and sober comedian. One sober comedian. Thought that worked. But uh, Beryl had my favorite, which was uh, just for me. It just said, uh, and I and I like the word. He said, uh, short dick satisfies Chrissy. I thought that made sense. That, <laughs> that works. And I'm glad he said short and not small. It makes me feel somewhat better because it may not be all terrible. Anyway, uh, that was the overnight game. What is today? <laughs> Do we have a night game? <laughs> The Night King game was dog, a fictional person, character, um, any of that, uh, right? Yeah, that's what yep, it was. Yep, yep, And so some of my favorites, I really liked Frankie Angle's Psycho Yo Yorkie instructor. <laughs> <laughs> Yorkies are yep. fucking crazy. Um, I liked uh, Winnie the Poodle by Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> but my favorite is going to be Frankie Berman's Indiana Bones. <laughs> oh. Congratulations, Berman. There. You're the Night King. Can come <laughs> claim your prize. Congratulations, Berman. You've always been quite the frisky lad. <laughs> <laughs> Name's a dog, Indiana. Awesome. All right. Uh, <laughs> well, the, today's game, well, today's game is actually inspired by Frankie Berman as well. He sent us a Facebook message saying say. that, uh, what if we bend a movie? So uh, take Ben and... Not like bend, not but bend. like... No, no, not like bend. Not like, bend, like, like you would bend. do with Laffy Taffy in your teeth, and now you can't really, your teeth are kind of stuck together. Yeah, yeah, that guy. Right, right. So, so like, you know, uh, uh, late shift. You know, we don't have to change that one much, but it's about Ben because he's late. Uh, so anything that has to do with Ben, it's a, it can be any sort of like, it can be a, a one you don't have to change, you know? You can have to like a uh, 40-year-old virgin, that one you don't have to change. That's fun. Um, or, uh, you know, you <laughs> or you can change a movie, however you want to do it. Well, ben a movie. One more example, like good. like a few good Bens or something. You want to A few good Bens good could work. Yeah. Yes, 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 okay. yes. Um, but uh, front row, you get two entries. Um, otherwise, you can Venmo or PayPal. Uh, game entries at uh, the top. Oh yeah! <laughs> I forgot. If you want to if you want to support the show, make sure you PayPal or Venmo in the upper right of the screen. PayPal at uh, whatever, wherever at sdscshow.com, or of course you can super chat in the super chat area wherever that takes place, and wherever you super chat nearest you. And then you can also do that for the games, which is what Rachel's talking about. I think about. it's on Instagram. Five dollars or more. We're never going to be on Instagram. Well, <laughs> hey, don't ever say never, man. You know. Yeah, we could I, easily I, put you it. You know what? I'll put it on Instagram and not change a thing, and it'll be a weird box, and you only see an eyeball. 
I like the way you're forward thinking there very much. Thank you so much, Taylor. <laughs> and uh, maybe Tam oh. could just live stream for Instagram every day. What do you think about that? <laughs> she's good at live streaming this. She could just just record the thing. Who's Tam? Is that somebody that's been in the front row? Uh, she's in the no, front she row a couple times. She, she's I been. Well, she, <laughs> her goal is to be in the front row someday. She's been okay, you know cool. working on it. So someday she'll, she'll get, get there. there. Uh, yep. So anyway, five dollars or more in a super chat to uh, join to, to play the game and send in those entries, and we'll play that at the end and find a winner. Um, we also have two great comics. Like, oh, don't turn your cameras on. I'm just saying that we have two great comics. We have <laughs> Augie Smith and Leanne Lord later that we'll introduce yeah, after the front row. After the front row, we'll those guys. So, Ben, why don't we do that? You're, are you taffy-free at this point? Can you do the front I'm row? I've been taffy-free since 93, baby. I'm pretty excited. <laughs> um, video front row, VFR, join the party. Turn the cameras on. Turn the non-cameras off. We're excited. Uh, Rachel's being very grabby today. I like that. That's normal. Um, <laughs> we are joined by a very good-looking front row today. I can't wait for all of you to show yourselves with your faces and all of that kind of stuff. I'm very excited to introduce you to Blue Corner Bill, everybody. Blue, great to have you here. We are joined by one of my favorite people in the world. You know her, you love her, it's Clams McDaniels. Great to have you, Clams. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, really nice to have you here. We are joined by Stanley Junglieb. And he's, yep, your green screen's not going to let you, oh, there we go. Just go with Sawalis. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Mike Wallace is how it's pronounced. <laughs> Mike Wallace. That was Mike Hunt. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> Some Hello Taffy's back. <laughs> we are joined by L and J Cafe Beer and Wine Food and Stuff. It's the Mutt Maker. <laughs> We're joined by Anna Hood, who's got an Earth behind the Earth, like a globe moon Earth. I like it. It's confusing. It's fun for the whole family. We got Brad Clark Five, whose mind is blown into a supernova explosion. Great to have you, BC One. We are also joined here in the VFR by Frank, the notable Notaro. The no sleeves Notaro. No spanky, no sleeves Notaro. Oh, no sleeves, sleeves no, in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. We got Frank Berman in the house. We got a Frank Frank back to back, Frank. bank to bank, Frank to Frank. <laughs> Great to have you, Frankles. We've got Sean Ehrlich joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Is that and uh, Bert and Ernest? As usual, iPad. That <laughs> oh, it's an otter. It's otter day. Today's it's, otter yeah. day. I don't normally have this. It's World Otter Day today. So. <laughs> oh, otter day. <laughs> could have fooled me, buddy. You could <laughs> have fooled me. Hopefully those otters have lots of otter sex the way they only know how to do it with otter <laughs> erotic asphyxiation. We all know that. <laughs> <laughs> We're joined by Cassie Nolan, everybody. Nice crown, Cassie. National Very... Redhead Day. What's that? It's also National Redhead Day. It's oh. National Redhead Day. That's why we asked Steve to just take a take a spa day. He can breathe in. <laughs> and enjoy himself uh, more than he's been all pandemic long, which is a hard feat to accomplish. But happy Redhead Day to you, Cassie. And not Tyler Gooch. We've got not Tyler Gooch joining us, everybody. No sleeves. <laughs> No no sleeves. Sleeves ben, are you jealous of that stack of hats he has behind him? That's a nice stack of hats that guy's yeah, got. Yeah, I gave away him. my stack of hats in Indy. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> really nice. Really nice stuff. Don't make me get a stack of hats. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> we got James Nielsen joining us. Great to have you, James. Team Bowers. I love that choice. It's a great choice. I don't. Hey. <laughs> You sold four Crazy. shirts. Don't make fun of the people that made fun of them. <laughs> we are joined it. by a Bibia M. Didier. It's Abby Ride, everybody. <laughs> we are joined by Aronka Happy Sunscreen Day. <laughs> it's also sunscreen day. For you I guess if it's redheaded day, it's got to be sunscreen day. day. Yeah, yeah. If it's got to be that Aronka. Day. <laughs> you say it right? Oh, I get it. Uh, to, for me, it is today. For you, it is tomorrow. Uh, sunscreen day, or, or is that a slam against redheaded people? 
I think Redhead Day and Sunshine Sunscreen Day should be the same day. It should really. be the same I mean, day, that yeah. should be the same, same day. They have that separate days. It's kind of a dick move, I think. Is that an otter doll you've got there? <laughs> it's cotton. <laughs> Is, I didn't know they had manatees in Germany. We do. I do. Wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> Very nice. We've got Shannon Burke joining us from a restoration hardware. <laughs> Great to have you, Shannon Burke. We are joined by Jojo Josepha Snyder, everybody, in a collection of pianos so grand, they're grand pianos. <laughs> yeah, like an organ looks like you got there, too. You got all kinds of good stuff. We've got, not only is it Redhead Day and Otter Day and Sunscreen Day, it's Upside Down Day. It's Lindsay Brownside, Upside, Round the Horn. <laughs> We are, I don't know how you did that, that's pretty cool. We are joined, mm -hmm. wait, maybe I do know how you did it, maybe you did it like this. Ooh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, I thought she was we, hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> we are joined by Melissa Fiore, everybody. Hey. Hello, Melissa. That staircase looks so old school. <laughs> It literally feels like you're in an old Southern play when you come to us next to this <laughs> banister. You ever slide down the banister? It's it's too short. That's the whole length of it. <laughs> that would not stop me or my balls. <laughs> not ideal, but a, you know, sometimes you need a good crunch. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I really that, don't know. That ball at the end is what stops your balls, Ben. That's yeah. that's not good. You, you, you want to jump over that thing if you can. Is yeah. Why thing. do they make that ball at the end? It's just to stop you from having fun. Like literally, that ball at the end serves no other purpose than to stop fun. <laughs> Sure, sure, and that's what guardrails are for too. That that keep you sort of <laughs> flying off the road in a fun way. <laughs> We've got Greg Otter than most Burns Jackson. <laughs> oh, breaking news! Otters keep choking themselves. It's the only way they can come. It's a good looking news. I would trust that that otter as my newsman. We are joined by J P Sleepy Bear with a cool Cheech and Chong shirt. <laughs> that is amazing. Best buds stick together. That's very true in many more ways than one. I'll tell, tell you a cute little uh, Cheech and Chong story in a second if you'd like. And we've got the dar. You see him on the fence, JP. I don't have to tell you the story. We've got <laughs> the darling of dramedy. It's Lady Corbin, everybody. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at that. Mine's not as good as Rachel's, but I want to match her anyway. It suits you. <laughs> Yours Thank look you. like yours look like look, look, looks like Larry from Three's Company's hair. <laughs> Lady, pull hey. up your sleeves. Get that reference. It's a oh, sleeveless yeah. day. There okay. you go. It's <laughs> sleeveless Corbin. <laughs> wow. And that, my friends, is the VFR. Very cool. We also have two amazing comics, as always. Leanne Lord is back. Leanne, Ooh. how are you doing? Oh, I am Ooh. fantastic. Good to be here from New York, representing the East Coast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Boom, boom. Love that. Welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome. We also have Augie Smith back today. Augie, how are you doing, buddy? Where's Hofstetter? <laughs> <laughs> I came for Hofstetter. <laughs> My body count as a comedian has gone up. I've now killed seven people from the stage. And I thought Hofstetter <laughs> might want to discuss it. <laughs> I did book you because I heard the story about the guy heckling you and then later dying, which I do want to hear about. Uh... That's just one guy. That's just one guy. <laughs> I can fill a basketball team with the people I've killed from stage. Wow. <laughs> he actually couldn't be here today because he's on the hunt, so he will report back. <laughs> Great to have you again, Augie. Very cool. Well, I, I'm excited to hear this story, but I do want to hear your Cheech and Chong story, Ben, because I'm assuming that you were about to fuck Cheech and then Chong cock blocked you, or you're about to fuck Chong and Cheech, <laughs> Cheech cock blocked you. I'm not sure which happened, but what's the story? Um, <laughs> I I did I did a uh, uh, couple voices in the movie The Book of Life, the animated film, and I improvised some things while doing it. So they invited me to also then come and do punch up on the script of the whole movie so they could add more jokes to it. So I show up for this punch-up day, and I'm doing punch-up with Gabriel Iglesias and Cheech Marin. <laughs> and I was so excited to be working with Cheech Marin, you know, definitely a legend, a hero. And so uh, I did the first half of the day punching up sober, and then went to my car and got stoned during lunch. 
So I could sure. be a little stoned to kind of match Cheech's vibe. And I come back and we had a few minutes till the day started again, till, till the work started again. And I say to Cheech, I go, Cheech, I went to the car and got a little stoned during lunch. And he looks at me and he goes, I don't know how you do that, man. I could never do that. <laughs> go, what are you talking about? He goes, no, man, maybe a little puff before bed occasionally, but I could never work stoned or think of thinking jokes. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Wow. I was blown. Next year, you're going to tell me that Larry the Cable Guy is not really a hillbilly. His name, his name is Dan, and he's from Nebraska. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> that story's better the second time we hear it. Have I told you that story before? Mm-hmm. I've never heard that story. <laughs> Bowers never heard, heard that story. Maybe I that's because Bowers was high. Is this a 420 episode, maybe? Okay. Was it, well, if it was any time I'm stoned, I don't remember anything I say when I'm stoned. So. All right. Well, I'm sorry I brought it up then if we'd already heard it. My bad. I, I can remember what story I've told you. I can't remember what story Ben's told you. Anyway, uh, we're going to catch up on race before we get to a comment. Tam, someone named Tam Brown said, there are shows on Wednesday? Huh? <laughs> maybe one day. Uh, Ray Benjamin said, Rachel, did your head explode? <laughs> Miss you, Ray. Uh, Technics Leanne, yay! East Cope, Keys Coast Key, no, 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 it's pronounced Keys Cope. It's <laughs> pronounced Keys Cope represent. Is that what it, okay, I, I thought I was having a stroke. Okay, that, that <laughs> no, sounds like that. Yeah. Okay, Keys Cope represent. Um, Alexander Breyer, I was 15 minutes late and I still didn't miss the front row. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. We got it. We're at quarter after. We're already through it. That's not bad. That's the way we've already That's... been through. We've already told stories. One of my fastest ones ever. I don't know yeah, what the hell I did. It's pretty good. It's pretty we're good. We're caught up. All right. Well, let's get to a comic. Uh, speaking of East Coast, Peace Coast, whatever you just said, it's Lee and <laughs> Lord, everybody. Woo! Thank you, thank you. And I, I actually forgot to say that your that that hair, my dear, that that's very Edward Scissorhands. Oh. <laughs> I hope that's a compliment. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I am. You guys. I'm glad to be here. I'm a native New Yorker. And, and it's weird, you know, when I when I travel and I tell people that I'm from New York, sometimes they get a little nervous. You know, yeah. they think I'm going to rob them or something. <laughs> um, so, so I do. <laughs> I'm a bit of a people pleaser. <laughs> <laughs> but I have some I have some good news to share. Uh, I am a, I'm a homeowner now. You guys. <laughs> yeah, but it's an old home. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I am learning. I'm learning a lot. I am learning that water heaters are like dogs. Um, <laughs> no. They last about 15 years, and when they go, it's gonna break your heart. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, so my water heater did go. Plumber came to replace it, and as he's putting in the new one, he goes, "Hey, did you know you had birds in your chimney?" I said, no, and he cocks his head. He's like, ah, I think they're swallows. I'm like, yeah, I think they're freeloaders. <laughs> <laughs> Can you make them go away? And he goes, no, you need a chimney guy. So I, I bring in the chimney guy because apparently me peeking my head up there going, shoo, shoo, is not the <laughs> professional way uh, to get rid of birds. So he comes in, he gets rid of the birds, and he goes, hey, uh, did you know there's a crack in your chimney? No. <laughs> start showing me pictures and you guys look i don't know what i'm looking at okay that could be pictures of my chimney or that could be pictures from his colonoscopy i don't know <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like dude listen i just replaced my water heater do i really need to do my chimney now and he goes well do you want to see santa claus this year <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Yes, I do. And I, I want him to bring me a new chimney and a new roof because the roof leaked. <laughs> I know. I know. Who is writing this chapter of my life? Stephen King, right? So, so I got the roof fixed and the roof guy goes, hey, did you know about the squirrels? <laughs> no. Apparently the squirrels think my roof is delicious and they've been eating it like candy. <laughs> and I have to do something about it because eventually they could actually get into the house. And I already have a cat, so I don't need nothing else furry in here. 
Mm-hmm. So I had to get two different people. One guy fixed the roof. One guy had to come and trap the squirrels because apparently in New York City, you can't kill squirrels because the squirrels have a very powerful uh, political lobby in all the <laughs> <laughs> So the guy has to come trap the squirrels, drive them across town and release them, which, which seems a little sketchy because how do I know some guy over there is not trapping squirrels and bringing them back <laughs> over here? And you can't just go up to a squirrel and go, hey, you don't look like you're from around here because that's racist. <laughs> so, so what I'm trying to say is I've been spending a lot of time in Home Depot and I'm, I'm not really a Home Depot kind of girl. I'm, I'm more of a DSW kind of girl. Okay? <laughs> So I, I walk in with a light bulb because I just need a light bulb and they send me to the lighting aisle and whew, it's, um, yeah, it's, you guys, it's like a wall of light bulbs. It's like floor to ceiling, New York to LA, nothing but light bulbs, okay? And I don't, I don't know how long I was standing there. Um, I mean, I think there was a shift change. <laughs> uh, there's a couple of shift changes and and the home depot guy comes over and uh he hands me a tissue because apparently i've been crying <laughs> and he he takes the bulb and in two seconds two seconds he fixes he gets me the bulbs that i need and then his orange apron turns into a cape and he flies away uh, <laughs> to help somebody who's been crying in the paint aisle <laughs> I, I bring home the light bulb i put it in it doesn't work i have to call the electrician <laughs> and the electrician shows up and he goes hey uh this panel you put in this panel actually is it's been here since last century baby you gotta you gotta replace that sweetie you gotta you upgrade the wiring so uh so i'm dating the electrician uh, <laughs> because <laughs> mama is all out of bitcoin <laughs> and i guess what i'm really learning right now is that uh home ownership is the slippery slope to homelessness so uh i'm gonna say it plain uh i'm here for the tips <laughs> thank you yeah, Lord, everybody. Ooh. Tip jar is open. Top yeah. left hand oh corner of the screen. Yes. Venmo. <laughs> Leanne, it does not look. I, I owned houses for a while and I fucking hated it because I'm not a fixer Ooh. person. The best thing about selling your house is not feeling bad about yourself when you go to Lowe's anymore. Like now when I go to Lowe's, I'm not like, oh, I should have new, oh, that leak. Oh, that car. I mean, ugh, I hated it so much. It's just Dude, the worst. it's so, it's so much. Listen, my grass was fine last week and then I blinked. <laughs> it's like it's like ankle deep it's there's weeds it's like i'm standing in the middle of jumanji i'm like this is not my life now i, I love that you had this angie list tag team though that kept tagging in the next person you know like like you got the what like they they know like if i if i do too much yes. she's gonna get overwhelmed so we'll just introduce we'll, we'll just put one more person in the rotation and they add the next person like some sort of daisy it's gonna be all yeah that <laughs> Dude, Real I quick, because I can't hold this uh, since college. I can't oh, hold this pose that much longer. But <laughs> snip, snip, motherfucker, snip, snip. That's perfect. How the hell did you do that? I, I, I don't have a green screen. I'm loving it. Yes, Anita, it's a pyramid scheme. I feel like they can't smell that there's a man living here, and they just got me. <laughs> no, it's the same. If it just though they, they take care of advantage of everybody. It's not because you're a woman. They do really? the same thing. If they can sense you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, man or woman, they're like, oh, you know, your Dooselwitz, it's all fucked up. And you're like, oh, my God, the Dooselwitz, it, no way. And that costs 1800 bucks. And then you find that's not even yes. a real thing. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that me right now. Yeah, it's tough. Ben, you own a home. What's yours? What's your experience like? I don't have that issue because what I do is I like to. Um, <laughs> did I do the trick? Uh, kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, wait, wait. is that my lawn? That looked like my lawn. Please don't do that. I'm very triggered right now. <laughs> I just have one of those home, home warranty companies. You pay them like 60 bucks a month or 70 bucks a month. And then whenever there's a problem, you just pay like a copay of 75 bucks and then they cover all the rest of the expenses and it's pretty easy. It sounds like some white people shit, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> a, 
I mean, I, you're not wrong. You're not wrong, Leanne. I was. My zip code. That was that does was the thing sound, I was thinking of. I, <laughs> does it sound not good? Because it's available for no, black people. It so you know. sounds amazing, which is yeah. why I never heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty awesome. And then I have a couple handyman friends that you know you give them a good hourly rate, and when other shit goes wrong, the warranty doesn't cover. They come over and fix it, and uh, you give them oh, ice cream. Oh, so they actually on the way out. show up for you. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I'm doing this so wrong. That's correct. <laughs> That's correct. I'm going to stop talking now before I get into major trouble, okay? <laughs> oh, oh, Ben, that ship has sailed, my love. <laughs> that's, that's been, that ship has been gone a good decade out of harbor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Edward Scissorhands, we got any tips coming in? What we got going? <laughs> We have a loud fucking airplane coming in, right as I say. Frankie Berman sent you five bucks and said, here's money to go towards your next home, your next visit to Home Depot. Today's going to be rough, Thank isn't you. it? <laughs> uh, then we also had Anna Hood sent you 10 bucks and said, you need this more than I do. <laughs> Kim Stewart, uh, Leanne, homeownership sucks when you're a single woman who can't fix it yourself. You see this manicure? Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great manicure. And you got a lot of compliments on your necklace. Star Trek, right? Thank you. Live long and prosper, everybody. Nice. You know what? If, if I were truly in the Federation, I'd get the help I needed. <laughs> Even let the Romulans in here at this point. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Zachary sent you five bucks and said, for completely re rebuilding your home. Great set. <laughs> Step by step, week by week. Thank you. Uh, Marianne White sent you 20 bucks and said, you're living in my head. I'll be sure to thank my next Home Depot hero. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do like that. And there's only one person, by the way, who knows what they're doing at Home Depot. It's just one guy. I don't care how many people are uh -huh. working there, just one. <laughs> Uh, Technics uh, sent a couple Canadian and said, Leanne's Creature Critters. Colin Schitty Birds. Colin, Colin O'Schitty? Is that a word? <laughs> what? I, don't know. I think it's made up. It, it's the word Rachel, colon, yeah. like, I don't remember that on the SAT study list. So no. <laughs> like, you ever spell a word so wrong that your phone's like, I got no fucking idea? Sometimes you pronounce things so terribly. Like, I don't even know what the root Listen, word is. Listen, motherfucker. <laughs> if the word colon and shkitty together. Shkitty. Shkitty. Why do you say shkitty like that's a word we know? Did they mean colonoscopy? Colonoscopy? Yeah. Where's Andrew? Andrew, get, Andrew getting in Zoom. Colonoscopy is what they meant. <laughs> maybe, but why do you call it colon shkitty? Can we move on? It must, it must be an autocorrect, maybe. Maybe. Uh, Cassie uh, sent you five bucks and said, I love your necklace and I hate your house. Thank you. Thank you. I hate my house too. Thank you. That's a great tip. Uh, oh, James Nielsen, uh, all you wanted was the tip and sent you five bucks. Oh. <laughs> well, I, I also wanted you guys to hear me because my therapist is on vacation. So, nothing you can ever possibly know. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, actually. Your therapist is not on vacation. Your therapist's office has been overrun by wolves. So you're going to have to get a wolf. <laughs> I would not be surprised. <laughs> your therapist is now a squirrel. It's going to be fine. Just talk to her. Yeah. Yeah. Please don't talk it up. Please don't talk it up. 250 nuts an hour. It is not easy. I got bionic squirrels in this bitch. This is insane. <laughs> Uh, let's see, front row Steve sent you 10 bucks and said, in case you need a plumber tomorrow. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't be putting that in the world. Don't say the word plumber. That's worse. <laughs> okay, that was part of the story I couldn't do. As they're emptying out the water from the old water heater, he goes, hey, did you know there's a clog in your sink? I do now. What the hell? <laughs> So did he then offer you. to thank unclog you. the clog? Did he say, do you need this, some he, plumbing he, help? He did, he did, but it was a weekend, and he said, baby, that's time and a half. And I said, see your ass on Monday, sir. We're not doing these weekend rates. <laughs> I do have a clogged sink that, that we keep making claims for this company, and they keep pretending like they aren't getting the claims. And so our sink, we've got about three minutes from turning on the sink to turning it off before it starts flooding everywhere. So I do feel your pain. Shit can go wrong. But you know, you just kind of roll with the punches. But you know what? You know you got a system down when you can time it. 
You got three oh. minutes. At <laughs> <laughs> a washing correct. machine, we're like, you can only wash this washing machine on medium. Any higher, it floods yes. the entire house. But medium is <laughs> yes. totally good. Just make sure you just put medium amount of laundry in there and you're totally good. The renters didn't like that. They're like, I should have a real washing machine. Well, I'm not a good landlord, yeah, so I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I did Skip have the another... third step when you run down. Skip the third step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. I <know> <laughs> I did have a, another weird house calamity that I think is probably very on brand for me. I came home from, from Indy, opened up the washer dryer closet, and my shelving unit had collapsed onto the washer dryer unit. But luckily, and I had all these storage boxes with all kinds of stuff on top of sure. it. And luckily, I had so much extra stuff like tall photo paper rolls that I'd never used that were blocking it. So it didn't actually hurt anything. It was all balanced precariously in the mix. I had just the right amount of stuff that didn't hurt anything too bad. And you know what? And I, I am again going to say that's some white people shit, Ben. <laughs> oh, this shit's working out for you. How do you fail up every freaking time? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm teaching a learning annex course called Failing Up with Ben Glebe. <laughs> Punching Brilliant. up and failing up with Ben Glebe. I like it. <laughs> Punching up, failing up, and uh, I'm not going to end the finish with feeling. I'm not going to finish what I was going to say because Carmel's home now. Mark's Mark's right. forward. That's a good one. <laughs> Uh, Technics tipped you again, but didn't tell me what the fuck he meant from the before tip, but he just said, amazing set, ask and you shall receive. Here's a couple Canadians for your Bitcoin boyfriend, betterment, boosterary <laughs> pyramid scheme, get yours. I definitely didn't say that right, but I don't know what word that was. I love it. I, lo I especially love Canadian. Canadian money, pretty. Yeah. <laughs> It's great. Got yes, windows it in it and holograms. It's smooth and colorful. Mm -hmm. Like, you guys still have hope. That's nice. <laughs> uh, Brad Clark sent you 10 bucks. Maybe get a tent for the backyard to live in while they replace your house. <laughs> Dude, I'm thinking about it. And watch the squirrels give me shade. Like, what you doing out here, bitch? This is <laughs> Uh, Razor said, Leanne, just make friends with a handyman. Then you'll have to buy home improvement parts and then leave them out for him to see them because when a handyman sees a new shiny part not being used, they just can't help themselves. Oh, wow. Go. That's where I am in my life. I'm leaving out parts instead of lingerie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Either way. No, I'll, Either I'll, ta work. I'll take it, but I didn't know that's where I was in my life now. Okay. <laughs> Either one will probably noted. <laughs> also, if you do have to go in the backyard while the work's getting done, I recommend you just move into the tree and show the squirrels what's up. You'd be like, this is how it feels. <laughs> squirrels and the birds. Yes. Okay. Got it. Build a nest out there and they'd be like, I don't think this is what she's supposed to do. Let's call it a trap. <laughs> a huge See ass somebody squirrel. somebody drive her across town. <laughs> By the way, an elaborate vendetta to try to show the squirrels the way that they're treating you. That's some white people shit. <laughs> and that's what gets me in the straight jacket, everybody. How did this happen? How did this happen? Well, it started with the water heater. <laughs> uh, let's see, LaBelle sent you five bucks and said, I love this set, but Rachel, what the fuck did you stick your tongue into a wall out of? <laughs> I'm Edward Is that a suggestion hands. for me? No, no, it's for, <laughs> it's right for you, but then he, he ripped on me. Hey, and, oh. and if anyone would know about accidentally sticking stuff into an outlet, it's LaBelle. So fucking listen. To that. <laughs> he fucks a fan, Leanne. He yeah, he fucks family. his fan. So occasionally, I'm sure there's a short in it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a man with some skill and some speed. Let's not sleep on that. <laughs> and if you ever want, say, uh, circumcision, he just turns the fan on first. Oh. <laughs> Rochelle Austin, hi Rochelle, I like your name, sent you 20 bucks and said, for Leanne, as a recent homeowner as well, I feel you, it's the worst. Who knew I would know the layout of the Home Depot? Good luck. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, never and then again. Ray Benjamin, uh, so he and said, towards a sign that says, squirrels not welcome. When I said I was <laughs> not, it was an expression. <laughs> Squirrel not welcome sign writing this down. I'm hoping they read English. Yeah. Yeah. No, you gotta you gotta write it in squirrelish. It's it's a whole different thing, but Oh uh, wow, is that like Elvish? Have we crossed over to Lord of the Rings territory? It's, it's, it's close with bushier tails, but yeah. Bushier tails. Uh, and then Jojo sent you five bucks for, for lingerie parts. 
There you go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you're back in that part of your life now. Yeah, the squirrels will like that. <laughs> uh, we're caught up. All right. Awesome job. Let's get to our next comic then. Coming up right now, it's Augie Smith, everybody. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to my kitchen. It's going to be real loud. I'm just telling you right now, my neighbor has taken this pandemic to start a home jackhammer instruction school. And apparently, <laughs> that's an all-day job. Or A, the early bird gets the worm in the jackhammering game. Uh, but they don't quit early. They keep going all day. And when they're not jackhammering, he has some sort of Pilates school where they just bang metal objects against one another or something like that. <laughs> but we're in the kitchen, and I'm ready to go. If I look a little upset, there's a reason for it. Get this, everybody. My kid goes to school down the street, right? They're trying to take the Satan statue down at his school. Apparently, people have been upset that there's a statue of the Dark Prince in his public school and want to take it down. And I'm like, guys, we need to honor both sides of history. <laughs> if, <laughs> if you're going to honor God, you have to honor those that tried to unseat him. Now, what happens <laughs> is these people take all the Satan statues down, and then what happens? We forget about Satan. And nobody knows that he exists anymore since that's the only way we learn about anything is through statues in public parks, for Christ's sake. Pretty soon, since we've forgotten about him, somebody gets the idea to throw God out of heaven, and then what happens? Uh -uh, your wokeness? Look, when I put my kid into Harvey Weinstein Elementary, I had some expectations about what was going to be going on in there, and this ain't it. Let me tell you something else. He goes in person now. You gotta keep in. You gotta keep in mind. Uh, my kids. Uh, he, he's a kindergartner. He's a kindergartner. So he's been around. He's seen some things. He goes in the morning, and since they can't feed them there, because apparently there's something called food allergies, which uh, in my generation we do not like food allergies. Man, do we get mad at it if a kid has a food? What's the matter, six year old with a food allergy? What, your immune system can't handle 150 years of industrial pollution pumped into your air and drinking water? Get over it, Snowflake. Because <laughs> we didn't have food allergies. We just had kids that ate strawberries and died. <laughs> they can't feed them there. And this, this is not a bit. This is the actual bag of food that my son was sent home with today. That is Chinese takeout, people. They give him Chinese takeout. There's a, uh, there's a fake hot pocket, which I call a not pocket. There's a, uh, there's a fake white castle, which I call a not quite castle. There's a pizza in there. We got Fritos, and we have three bags. Count them, three bags of milk. So my point being that I've been doing this uh, this exercise. I don't about twenty years ago. There was a documentary called Supersize Me, where a guy ate at McDonald's every day and then and then watched what happened. So what I've been doing is I have been eating everything in my son's lunch every single day for the last month, and so far the results are that my son has lost six pounds. Damn! Hold on for that joke. <laughs> what are you wondering people uh, please explain paradox to us okay good question paradox isn't just what the hip Portland girls wore on their feet when they did poetry slams in the 90s paradox <laughs> comedically speaking is when a comic gets on stage and says something incredibly over the top racist, homophobic misogynistic what have you. And then his next sentence is to tell you how he's not allowed to say the thing that he just said. He says it, he says it, and then the next goddamn sentence <laughs> is him saying that he can't say it. What kind of bullshit Kobayashi Maru of self accusation is this? Both can be true, young comics. Quit 
fighting <laughs> against the new comedy rules, okay? I was around doing comedy in the 90s, and it was a goddamn hate crime. Thank <laughs> God we changed the rules. This used to be a bit. If you were on stage and there was two men sitting together, you would say, what are you two, on a date? <laughs> can you imagine? Can you imagine two people born the same gender actually going out romantically? How could it happen? <laughs> but it turns out there is something called gay people. And sometimes <laughs> they enjoy going out and watching comedy, which is amazing to me. I don't know why they would. So this, is another, this is another actual joke. Bowers, Cleve, I'll bet you remember this joke. I knew six guys did this joke. The joke always started with the road comic would be in San Francisco. Because now, if I were to start a joke that I was in San Francisco, you might think, oh, he's going to do a joke about the invention of the blue jean, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> in the 90s, if you started in San Francisco, it meant gay. That's all it meant. You were about to do a gay joke. And people yeah. knew, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> we know that one. So it would go that the, the road comic is walking through a section of San Francisco and he dropped something, either his wallet or his keys. And here comes the punchline, everybody. <laughs> he had the ticket all the way back to his car. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows why that's funny? I'll tell you why it's funny. Because we're the comic to stop and retrieve said article. <laughs> well, then a pack of roving homosexuals <laughs> would descend on his bloated comic road ass and just have at it like kittens around a bowl of milk pushing each other out of the way. Because it's the only way gay people in San Francisco have sex is they wait for a shitty road comic to drop something so they can gang rape him. Isn't that hilarious? Why would we fight against that? Thank God the rules have changed. Hobbit is only getting better. I don't have a punchline for any of it. Where the hell is Hofstetter? <laughs> Augie Smith, ladies and gentlemen. Augie Smith, yes. Oh my goodness, dude, dude. <laughs> Hip jar is saying. open. Speak it, truth. I love it, Augie. Oh man, you're you're so right. I mean, the new thing I'm seeing with comics, and I've been doing these these shows here, is is they'll go. So I have a gay friend, which is fine, and I'm like, yeah, of course it's fine. What are you talking about? <laughs> you saying which is fine implies that it's not fine. Shut up. Of course, I mean. At this point, why is it? So I want to start saying I have a heterosexual friend, which is fine. And all my jokes just kind of <laughs> normalize that. <laughs> my favorite was the comics always had to tell you he wasn't gay. Like no matter what the joke was. Now, I'm not gay. And yeah, you know, I actually did some research. You know that every comic in the 1990s that said they weren't gay is actually gay. <laughs> and every single one of them is actually gay. Yeah, it's it, it. Well, that's and I've been joking like that's why uh, I mean, hillbillies are all mad about PC culture, but it's really they just took away their street jokes because all street jokes are sexist, homophobic or racist. It's like, you know, who else has to write new jokes? Everyone, dick. I'm a fucking yeah. professional comic. I have five albums. You've never fucking heard of me. I can't do jokes. For, here, you want me to prove it to you? Yeah, here's a joke that four years or however long ago would destroy and now you get punched in the face. Here's how fleeting comedy is my wife fuck you right if you said that right now someone would punch you we have to write new shit quit being assholes about it god damn it <laughs> i love i love the old guys they're like oh you can't even do colleges anymore it's like you can't do colleges anymore because you're 50 and haven't written a joke in 25 years. Yes. Of course you, you better can't do say it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've always said I haven't seen anybody get in trouble for a bad for a ter for a, for a good joke. It's only terrible jokes that were bad to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> Once written a brilliant joke and people went like, "Nope, okay. cancel him. That was too good." <laughs> can I just ask Augie when is your new comic seminar so we can cut all this bullshit out? <laughs> <laughs> I love oh, it. Yes. I love it. Don't listen to me. The kids don't listen to nothing. They know oh, listen, everything. you you had me at Kobayashi Maru. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uggy, I just it have so so funny. That so was funny. so good. Very 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 funny. Very good points. I just have one question from seeing your set. Bags of milk. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Bags yeah, of you, milk. I know that's a thing. You don't believe me. Yeah. Bag from the of Harvey milk. Weinstein Elementary. Oh my God! How do you drink it? You're supposed to. And you know what else? There's crack a no corner way to open it. 
I have to put it over the sink, stab it, and then squeeze it <laughs> into a glass. They're trying to recreate it... actually milking a cow for your child. <laughs> Bags of milk. Do you put a nipple on it and it's like a fake breast? I don't understand. <laughs> it's the boxed line of dairy. Yes. Oh, I'm very proud of it. Wow. Now, now, Augie, I do want to hear the story of the guy heckling you and then going home and dying. What Can you tell okay. that story? Here's the thing, Chris. It, it's, it's, it, it's, for the story to be in proper context, you need the whole thing. And I'm going to give you a really, really shortened version of a lifetime of doing this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 25 years ago, I'm working Greek night at a bar in North Carolina to 400 frat guys and sorority girls that all hated me. I ended a very bad set by saying, I hope you all die in a fire. Jesus. Four days later, a fraternity at Duke University burned down and five people died. Oh, okay. Shit. Cut to a few years later. <laughs> Bud Hackett is a judge on Last Comic Standing, and he defends joke theft. It just, it's a long story, but I, I get on stage, and I jokingly call for the death of Buddy Hackett. Buddy Hackett was dead inside of a week of me doing that. A few years <laughs> later, I'm working with a comic at the Stardome who is selling his CD to be sent to the <laughs> troops overseas. And when I compliment on him, him on it afterwards, he says, well, you know, my price of goods and shipping is less than $5, and I charge 20 And he's just taking the rest of the money. So he's a fucking war profiteer. So I get on stage, and I do what I do. I call for his death. And a couple <laughs> months later, I run into another comic from the South I know, and he tells me that guy died of a heart attack. Okay? So this is my history. And this is how I figured out that I have some sort of power here. So I stopped calling for people's deaths on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks ago, I'm doing my first hour uh, since pandemic. And uh, there's a great big guy in the front row. And he, there was four people up before me. And, and he's heckling all of them. He's, and it's just, it's clear he's not going to make it through the show. He was heckling my intro. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm like three minutes in and they come over and they tap him out. They tap him out and he's making a deal. He's leaving. And sometimes as a comedian, you don't always say the thing you wish you had said. Sometimes, mm. especially when somebody's messing with your show and it's your first time back in a year and a half, sometimes you say stuff you regret a little bit. So here's what I said. <laughs> as he's leaving, I said, 600,000 people dead of COVID. Why couldn't one of them have been you? <laughs> oh. Get how fat you are. You must have diabetes. It looks like you swallowed every high risk group. Okay. <laughs> oh, shit. The other amendment to this story is that one of the comics earlier on the show had dated him. And he apparently, after they had sex one time, had shit the bed. So she <laughs> told a story about him shitting the bed, but not actually pointing out that that was the guy. So I tell the crowd as he's leaving, oh, by the way, earlier, that story about the guy shitting the bed, that's that fucking guy. Right there. That's the guy. <laughs> this is in Billings, Montana. It's not a big, big community. I find out that guy, and his name was Beard, everybody. Beard went home and died in his sleep that night. Yes. And the last interaction I had on, on with Beard on this earth was saying I wish he had. Now I didn't. I didn't say I wish he had died. I said I, I wish that he had died. <laughs> Not that I would. That he would die. So I think that we can kind of split hairs a little bit. It doesn't count as much as the other ones. But I have a weird demon power, and uh, Karen Rontowski is talking to her demonologist for me to figure out what it is. <laughs> Well, I mean, there's one thing you can't do is split hairs, not to be a dick, but um, <laughs> I mean, I just want to say, Augie, that I've always admired you and loved your comedy. <laughs> 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 I, I can I just add I was giving you compliments before I knew you were murdering people. <laughs> <laughs> the compliments were genuine and not to save my life. <laughs> I'm a changed man. I'm not like that anymore. I'm Eastwood uh -huh. and I'm forgiven, man. I, 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 you mean enough. since last week? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. I'm okay, the change problems when it comes. Hey, when, okay. when you when you kill a man, it changes you. I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> you take stock of what you're about. <laughs> wow. Yeah.
<laughs> I love it, Augie. So wait, so Although, really, if you want to like say anything real quick about Donald Trump, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear his oh, name please. ever again. <laughs> Rach, we got tips coming in. Yes, we do. All right, Augie. Kim Sewer sent you five bucks and said, for your own miniature Satan statue. <laughs> uh, Alexander Breyer tipped and said, why do I feel like I went to a QAnon meeting after that set? Because <laughs> you don't understand sarcasm, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, I'm just saying. You, I'm saying that, that that was sarcasm, and like, if you wrote that on Facebook, maybe people wouldn't catch that you were kidding. That's right. the that's the thing I was saying. It was definitely kidding. Uh, Tina Ortiz sent you ten bucks and said, "I work for a school of truth." Uh, Frankie Berman said, "Great set and tipped you, Andrea. Um, your rage amuses me." <laughs> 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 I don't know what to do with that. Ah, take it. Take it. Take it. Your rage amuses me is a great shirt. Your rage amuses. It amuses. I thought you said your rage abuses me. No, no, amuses. No, amuses. amuses. <laughs> different totally different. That's, totally different. That, that's your book, movie, and podcast, sir. Yeah. <laughs> and and so glad we clarified that miss here because Augie was about to cast a spell on you. So that thank God. <laughs> Not me. Amuses. Amuses. Uh. Let's see, uh, Jojo. Oh, I tipped and said, for you. <laughs> uh, Jojo tipped and said, "Freaking food allergies, teacher flashback, PTSD." <laughs> uh, let's see, Zachary tipped and said, "Great set." Frankie Berman tipped. Uh, should we call you Doctor Death now? <laughs> no, no, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> Mr. Death. Dr. Death was my dad. It's I, Mr. Death. Like that stop and Dr. Oz. Come on, man. <laughs> Did not stop Dr. Oz. Just take that. <laughs> By the time they do the research, you'd have made the money. Yeah, I mean, Dr. Oz, like, what a weird name to even give yourself as a doctor. Name yourself after a fictional place. I'm Dr. <laughs> Oz. Uh, that's the whole joke. He is literally the man behind the curtain, everybody. Yes. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we have coming I in. I did a sketch with Dr. Oz once when he pretended to be my proctologist. That's the kind of stuff this, this doctor is doing, okay? <laughs> Going on. Sure, sure, it was a sketch, Ben. It was a sketch. It was at his house and there weren't any cameras, but it was a sketch, sure. Well, and, and not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, LJ Munch with tips. the cross comic tag, y'all. <laughs> uh, LJ Munch tipped and said, I would have tipped you more, but the rest of my money went to buy uh, my enemies tickets to your show. I'll email you their pictures and do what you want to do. Uh, Rochelle sent you 20 bucks and said, I gave 20 to Leanne. I'm giving you the same so that I don't get hexed. <laughs> Uh, Andrea tipped again and said, long story short, Augie Smith, murder for hire. This $5 towards my layaway plan for a murder to be determined later. I know I'm going to need one. I don't know who deserves it more. I, I, and Augie, I think you've stumbled onto the greatest opener of all time. If you told this story to open every set, I think everyone would be very polite to you the whole time, I think. <laughs> it would... it, people's, people's mood changes when I tell the story, Chris. It, oh, the they? People, uh, their mood changes. <laughs> I can tell you that. Apparently so. Uh, Chill Lee Dog sent each comic 10 bucks. Cindy Wood sent each comic uh, 20 bucks. Uh, LaBelle uh, tipping Augie so he doesn't say my name. I have too much to live for. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a Canadian. <laughs> uh, Victoria Scatareggio for Augie. We didn't have food allergies. We just had kids who ate strawberries and died. Just killed me. <laughs> Run bro, Steve sent 10 bucks protection money. So Augie never wishes death on me. It's a good way to get tips. <laughs> Razor tipped and said, I think our new friend named Pre Premium Water, who was on our YouTube, was trying to heckle you, but he wasn't doing a very good job of it. Small dick energy. So I'm just sure he's still watching you if you want to say hi to him. <laughs> hi to him. <laughs> 
awesome. now they're just throwing other people under the bus. Yeah. That's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> I heard him, Skittles Johnson him, was me. talking shit. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so great. Uh, let's see. Cassie, Augie, I love you and you're pretty. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> uh andrea uh tipped leanne five bucks and said i missed your set but i love you you got to make me laugh once in the past to continue collecting dividends i guess (laughs) i like it comedy with interest (laughs) and i think we're ready for the game all right let's play this game we are gonna bend a movie we're gonna bend a movie we're gonna bend a movie so front row get those hands raised ready for two entries these are my unpaid entries that i really liked Luthasus had no country for old Ben. Get it? Because he <laughs> lost the election. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I liked it. Uh, Grim Beard, Glebe in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> and then my favorite, Julia Credor's The Curious Case of Ben Glebe's Nipples. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, Aunt, uh, Frank Berman is up first. Yeah, so I have four. I have Harold and Kumar go to White Cast Sapillus. Cassapillus. <laughs> <laughs> I also have the tiny hands that rock the cradle. <laughs> <laughs> I have regarding Henry Horse. Nice. <laughs> and then uh so have Ghostbusters clock cock blockers. <laughs> <laughs> Greg. All right. Uh, this one's kind of old, so I got a, a visual reference. This one is uh, Gleaving the Cube. <laughs> <laughs> I love like, that haircut on him. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, our idiot test brother. <laughs> and, and this one's kind of low-hanging fruit, so I'm going to apologize in advance. Um, I'm Ray Claimer, if you will. Um, the Ben Commandments. <laughs> I love that. Nice. Say like George Clooney. <laughs> Come up with some of those. That is a great graphic. You got to post that, dude. That is awesome. Aranka. Okay. Um, I've got the Food Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, call me by Cass Civil's name. <laughs> uh-huh. Shannon. I have 2021 A Spliff Odyssey, <laughs> and 28 Globes Later. <laughs> nice. JP. All right. I have uh, Heart of the Sea, starring Stephen Tabor, <laughs> <laughs> and Brad Pitt in Globe War Z. <laughs> <laughs> LJ. Okay, instead of Blazing Saddles, Blazing Ben. <laughs> and instead of Scott Scott Pilgrim versus the world, Ben Glebe versus the buffet. <laughs> <laughs> the buffet always loses. Yeah, the buffet would lose four. Oh, nice. <laughs> ben has put three different buffets out of business in his career. <laughs> Abby. I have all the former presidential candidates men. <laughs> and the Henry Horse Whisperer. Nice. <laughs> nice. Lavelle. Uh oh. Uh-uh. Um, okay. uh, I have mementos. <laughs> <laughs> Based on Ben's favorite joke, Boondock Taints. <laughs> <laughs> Bill. Oh no. To where to God, Bill. No. I was so disappointed when I said that. Bill, there are other brands of headphones. <laughs> These are brand new. There you go. <laughs> Very great. That's what we're saying. That's the point we're making. All right. What do you got? All right. Uh, first one's a mystery woman. Cash, Kush, Kosh. How the fuck do you say that name? <laughs> And um, the other one is, oh, how fucking high am I? (laughs) (laughs) Front row Steve. 
We, we have so many, but we'll just do two. Uh, classics. To kill a mocking band. <laughs> <laughs> and this one is a, a Charlton Heston classic, or it might be Glebe in a dress, Ben Hur. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Nice. Cassie. Uh, uh, 10 Things I Hate About Fart Jokes. <laughs> and waiting. <laughs> That's us for Ben. Well, that works oh, on yeah. lots of levels. <laughs> Melissa. So I have to acknowledge Ralph because he couldn't be here today. So he gave me his ticket. So we put these together. Um, the first one is Benjamin unbuttons his pants after eating 21 hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and dude, where's my Carmel? <laughs> nice. Sean. All right, so um, I went with the uh, Barbara Streisand theme since uh, <laughs> uh, because of their history together and because she's my cousin. Um, so <laughs> funny guy instead of funny girl. Nice. And Benthel. <laughs> <laughs> if she's your cousin, I'm going to write an angry worded letter that you're going to have to deliver for me. <laughs> she, doesn't, she doesn't acknowledge my existence. <laughs> but she is my cousin. Wow. Angles. <laughs> hey. Okay. Um... I got a glory road, a trip through Ben's 20s and 30s. <laughs> <laughs> you should have been there. And then um, the Ben father. Nice. And continuously propo um, propositions Carmel to no avail and lands that classic line um, that everyone knows. I made her an offer she couldn't hear. <laughs> <laughs> James. Uh, I just got one. Uh, ben and the giant peach. <laughs> the giant what? Uh, the giant peach, like James and the giant peach. <laughs> nice. Oh. <laughs> that sounds delicious. Stanley, good to see you, buddy. Breakfast, brunch, lunch, supper, and dinner at Tiffany's. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, All right. Is there anybody else in our front row that didn't get on camera that wants to wave at me physically? You're not. Okay. Um, so let's see. These are the rest of the entries. So I have Cynthia Cresswell, Pineapple Kush Express. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Adler had, instead of Benji, we have Benji. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle Zajac, and she's sorry for this one in advance. She's only following a great tradition. Schindler's Nips. <laughs> <laughs> I Jack I Dostal. Dostal. I wish I could have eaten so many more. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, Jack Dostal. Hump fiction, and here's a backdrop. If someone comes up with a first, UHF is probably where you'll find idiot test. Oh. <laughs> uh, Anna Hood, the Italian hand job. <laughs> she also had, I know what you didn't do last summer. <laughs> And some like it in hot tubs. <laughs> <laughs> that was both Anna? Yeah, those were Anna. Uh, Josh Ritter, Ben in the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad, sexless life. <laughs> <laughs> a, little, a little aggressive, but okay. Sure. A little aggressive, <laughs> yes. <laughs> he also had hot tub set machine. <laughs> I can't tell if he tried to type in sex, but then it just auto-corrected to set. I would Maybe. assume. I would assume it was sex machine, yes. Uh, Adler, saving Lieberman. <laughs> <laughs> Victoria Scattereggio, what every prop longs for, a glebe of their own. Alexander Breyer, Carmel, here's a who? Carmel, here <laughs> And then Razor, don't tell mom the Spectrum guy is dead. 
that's, a, that's a deep pull from a long time ago. That's hilarious. Yes. Uh, Abby had Babette's Feast of Hot Dogs, Day-Old Pasta, and Desecrated String Cheese. <laughs> and Frankie Berman, uh, face off. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, those are all of them. All right. Uh, Good stuff. I really liked a Glebe of their own. Uh, waiting was funny. Frank's Glory Road. Cassie was waiting. LaBelle with Mementos is funny. I thought all Greg's were good. I like Gleaming the Cube a lot. Uh, Frank's the tiny hand that rocks the cradle. But I got to go with Anna's I Know What You Didn't Do Last Summer. That's the one I'm going with. It was my favorite. Uh, Augie, what was your favorite? I liked all the one, the one that the breakfast, lunch, and uh, Tiffany's. Uh, Stanley's. Yeah, cool. but did, nobody did. Uh, Stella got her crowd work back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to ours in just a second. So your vote is the the lunch, dinner, and Tiffany's. Cool. Yeah, uh, Leanne, what was your vote? I'm torn between Ben Hur and a Glebe of their own. <laughs> <laughs> Both great. Pick one. All right, a Glebe of their own. All right, Rachel. God damn, I don't even know. Uh, our idiot brother, the idiot Ted Carter, the Greggs, the Benjamin unbutton his pants. Stanley's was awesome. Um, it's between a gleep of their own or I know what you didn't do last summer. I'm going to give it to I know what you didn't do last summer. All right, Ben, you can either make somebody the winner or you can make a tie or you can pick a totally, totally different one. What What's got? the score now? It's uh, it's two for We Know What You Didn't Do Last Summer, and <laughs> then one for the Tiffany's, and one for... Gleberman of a Gleave of Their Own. Gleave of Their Own. Such good ones. Loved Gleaving Las Vegas, The Ben Commandments, The Food Terminator, Benjamin <laughs> Unbuttons His Pants, uh, <laughs> Some Like It in Hot Tubs. I Know What You Didn't Do Last Summer from Anna was very, very good, but I have to give it to Scattereggio with what every prop longs for, a Gleave of Their Own. <laughs> So that's a tie. tie. So got Taylor, Taylor's the Taylor's the tiebreaker. Yeah. Taylor. Uh, yeah, I love Gleeb of Their Own. So there it is. Victoria right. Nice Congratulations. work, Victoria. Gleeb of Their Own. Nice job. That was my second place. So good job. Well done. Us. Email awesome. us sdscshow.com to claim your prize. You are the game winner. Cool. Uh, Leanne, did you have any or, or uh, did you have any? I I did. I couldn't believe no one did Jurassic Ben. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Zack Snyder's Ben Glebe. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Augie, do you have any more than the Stella? You got the Stella one. Do you have another one? I, I got kicked outside because the kids came in. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just pretty loud. Uh, but just for his politics and smooth singing voice, I would say Blue Velvet. <laughs> <laughs> I like nice. That. Nice. Rach, you have any? No, I don't. Ben, do you have any? I do not have any. I've got a couple. I've got, uh, instead of the Bone Collector, the Everything Collector. <laughs> uh, I have eight hats in a duffel bag. Um, and then I have one Ben inspired one, which is Mama Mia need you to pay for a hotel room for me and this girl because tonight we might go down to go downtown to Chinatown, if you know what I mean. After all, this is part of my 20s and 30s that you've heard so much about. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, it's time for the song, Ben. Here we go. Fuck you guys, it's Leedy Doodle time, it's Leedy Doodle time, it's time for Leedy Corbin's doodle that she's drawn. Alrighty, here we go. I liked fuck you guys at the beginning, I think that should be a permanent All right, back to the very first one. Oh, that was from something else. There it is, wham! Oh. Oh. <laughs> Could you feel that? <laughs> right after that, I sang Careless Whisper. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, I have I Demand Hofstetter. <laughs> <laughs> then I have Home Depot Man. <laughs> Home Depot Man! <laughs> I love the rest Home here. Depot Man! <laughs> looks so powerful. I trust him instantly. All right, <laughs> next I have the Elvish Squirrel. <laughs> then I have what about the squirrels? What about the sink? What about the leak? What about the holes? <laughs> oh. 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 Thank you. Too real? Is it too real? <laughs> and I have <laughs> oh. yeah. es perfecto. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> um, 
then I've got Just your rage down. amuses me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. that's Andrea. Uh, oh, that's my reminder to go to the animation because I forgot a drawing yesterday and I felt huh. silly. All right, here we go. Ready? <laughs> ben and his toffee. <laughs> At art for my heroes and Lady Corbin.com, everybody. Thanks, Very bro, Steve. Cool. <laughs> Very cool. All right, we did it. Augie, where do we find you? How do we follow you around the internet? Do you have any shows coming up live anywhere that we, you want to kill uh, people? If you're, I'm going to go to Alaska next week. So if you're in Alaska, come see me in Alaska. Uh, AugieSmith.com has dates, but I don't have that many this summer. Uh, Twitter's the best, A-U-G-G-I-E-S-M-I-T-H. I love awesome. the idea Thanks, that... Buddy. That, that you get off stage and you're like, I killed. And everybody's like, oh, no, again. <laughs> His merch as he sells amulets just keep you alive throughout the night. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Leanne, how do we find you? How do we follow you, Red? Thanks, Augie. We'll okay. see you next time, buddy. Love you. How do Bye, we find Augie. you? Uh, the portal to all things me is veryfunnylady.com. That's where my schedule is of where I'm performing both live and virtually and to all my social media. So stalkers, welcome. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> Veryfunnylady.com. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, Leanne. Appreciate it. Uh, as for me, you can find me at Bowers Comedy, as you always can. Uh, I'm at the Federal Bar tonight at 8 o'clock. But before that, I'm on Orange and Stories with Rachel and Danny Jolson tonight at 6 Pacific. So check that out. Ben, what you got coming up? Uh, tonight, I am at Supernova Comedy in Hollywood, the 930 show with Taylor Tomlinson, Harlan Williams, Steve Byrne, Mary Lynn Rayska, Brad Williams, Ruben Paul. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, both shows at Ha Ha Comedy Club tomorrow in the Valley, uh, if you want to check that out with Taylor Tomlinson. And uh, this Saturday, the one year anniversary of Glebe off the top. I'm very excited. Ooh. It's going to be a ton of fun. We will see you there. You can get a discounted ticket by going to NowhereComedyClub.com and using the code SDSC. Or you can pay full price. I, I, I see Steve shaking his head at the discount, so feel free to pay full price. We'll be a <laughs> VIP afterwards. Uh, it's going to be a ton of fun. i got some special surprises coming. It's going to be a good night. Very cool. Awesome. Rach, anything you want to uh, catch up on? Uh, just to plug our Sunday fun day brunch, our first and only, I think, Sunday show we're having at 11 a.m. this Sunday, right before Memorial Day. So get your tickets to be in the front row, cook a bunch of food or not, order McDonald's, I don't give a shit, but eat with us and watch Ben be a little upset while he's in the car and not able to <laughs> eat with us. Fuck um, up. Fuck and up. then plug our Patreon, SDSC. We're having our VIP hang next week. Um, and we're starting to, I think, talk about maybe doing some other different stuff. So join in before it's, I can't say it's too late. It's not going to be too I, I late. Think I, we're here. Yeah, we'll be around. So check mm -hmm. it out. Uh, very cool. Well, thank you, Front Row. We love you as always. We will see you Friday for Fucking Fan Friday at our normal time for Friday, right? So uh, we'll check that out. Friday, Fucking Fan Friday. Thanks so much. Rachel, anything you want to say, anything you want to say before we get out of here? Um. <laughs> 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 does he talk he doesn't speak much right no he doesn't talk at all that's kind of his whole thing he does talk okay. a little he does <laughs> a little yeah i thought he just talked with his scissors no he talks a little bit he talks uh, a little. He? yeah okay. and then cut <laughs> awesome awesome well yeah another great show we'll see you guys friday i love you everybody so much fun. We will see you Friday. And just one last reminder, Steve's not here today. So. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>